So, thank you all, and thank you, Eric. You know, when we think about Android, we get really excited because Android really is about that merger of those three themes that Eric has been talking about. Um, you're talking about computing, connectivity, and the cloud. And when you put that all together, you're really looking at what is nothing short of a revolution. The line is blurring between mobile phones and desktop computing. And what I want to do is show you two demos on Android that really illustrate that blurring of lines. Starting with something which has always been kind of uh, missing from the desktop browsing experience. Now, one of our main goals when we embarked on smartphones at Google was to really mirror the desktop web browsing experience right there on your phone, right there in your pocket. But for many of you out there, and you know who you are, there's been a critical component that's been missing, Flash. So what I want to give you a sneak preview of today is Flash running on Android. And here you see an image that many of you are probably familiar with, the New York Times. Uh, but as you scroll around, you can see that all the components are there, including the videos. And I'm just going to zoom in here, <coughs> take a look at this uh, video of a logger, and why don't we just start playing that, that video. So one tap, this is actually just now buffering. Everyone here, get off Wi-Fi. That's right. <laughs> well, as this is buffering, the beauty of this is that you can actually page around and this video would actually be playing uh, in the context of the overall web page. Let's take you to another video which will actually hopefully run. And we may be able to come back there later. But here's one that um, I think will appeal to a lot of you, which is movie trailers. And um, you know, let's launch one here, which is the Book of Eli. And the, um, the beauty of what we were able to do by working really closely with Adobe is tie the Flash runtime directly into the native capabilities of these smartphones, these really high-end smartphones. So the, uh, the wondrous thing about these uh, high-end devices now is that they come with very high-end advanced graphics processing. Um, and the Flash 10.1 that's now running on Android, it's not Flash Lite, this is the full Flash 10.1. Um, is leveraging the hardware acceleration capabilities that are native on the device. So here you have a movie trailer. It was here. 30 winters ago, the war tore a hole in the sky. Only a few survived. All right. Our let's, only uh, hope let's put that to a stop. But uh, the last demo I wanted to show is probably one that most of you will spend most of your time using when we talk about Flash, and that's gaming. So here we have a site called MiniClip. And uh, MiniClip is a compilation of a lot of different games that uh, you know, you'll probably enjoy here on your phone. Uh, I'll pick one here called Alien Attack. And uh, you know, you've got three minutes to spare at the bus stop. Put the full screen. Double tap to fill it to the full screen here. And let's start uh, saving the world by shooting down some aliens. That's, that's a friendly, I learned that. And uh, here we go, a little fire. fire. So as you can see, Flash is running now. Um, what really gets me excited about Flash, though, is the fact that it's not just completing the picture about desktop browsing, but it's also extending the reach of all those Flash developers out there and giving access <laughs> to all of you to the wondrous uh, catalog of content that's working on Flash. But the other piece about cloud computing and, and sort of tying this all to mobile um, that gets me really truly excited is um, how we can miniaturize the world. When we make these devices, smartphones, connected to the cloud, then anything really is possible. Now, a lot of you have probably played with an app called Google Earth. And uh, you've probably played with it on your, your PC computer. Um, but what is so amazing about Earth is uh, its ability as well to, to educate and to inform. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's fly into Haiti. Now, Eric, in his, in his earlier talk, talked a little bit about the examples of how uh, you know, smartphones have played a critical role in Haiti. In fact, I think it's almost $20 million that have been raised just through SMSs alone uh, for the Haiti cause. But one thing that I did as soon as the Haiti earthquake uh, arose was I launched this app and I showed it to my friends because they didn't see what had happened. 
And what happened was, just two days after the earthquake hit Haiti, Google acquired updated satellite imagery of Haiti that showed what had happened. And what I'm going to do here is zoom in to Haiti, and I'm going to pick this location here. This is the presidential palace in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And you can see that the roof of the building has completely caved in. And if I pan just directly across the lawn, there are some refugee camps that were formed temporarily um, because of the earthquake. Just an amazing illustration of what you can do just in your pocket and inform and educate and learn. And of course, if we layer on top some of that great voice recognition software that Hartnett just demonstrated, Mount Fuji. What you find is that you can have all those great capabilities that you had and enjoyed on the desktop computer, but now here on your phone. And I'm going to fly to Mount Fuji. It recognized what I said. It's doing all the animation really, really fast uh, that you expect to see on a desktop computer. And just to prove that we did indeed find Mount Fuji, I'm going to get that bird's eye 3D view of the mountain right here on my phone. So there you have it. I think. You know, there's just two examples uh, of what really is possible with smart end phones uh, running on a platform like Android. And with that, back to you. Thank you very much.